Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. I'm here with Vander, and today we're going to look at the fire subclasses at Tasha's uh, Cauldron of Everything. Um, so, yes, let me uh, pass it to Vander, where he'll talk about first about the optional class features. They decided to go ham and give Fighter a lot more versatility. So, first level for your fighting style option, uh, in addition to all of the other ones that you've had before, uh, you now have Blind Fighting, where you have Blind Sight which is great uh, and awful at the same time. So like it hurts you in a couple small ways, but it's role play worth. it's really role play worthy if you want to play a character like that. Addition of blind sight, it's uh, it really offsets like the negatives that you could normally have because of it. Um, interception, uh, basically it's just an easy way for you to defend people similar to the protection fighter style, but different enough that it's still pretty fun and superior techniques so if you wanted to play a champion uh class or one of the newer ones that we're about to talk here but you really wanted to get like a specific maneuver because there's so many and they're just super helpful in certain situations superior technique lets you get a maneuver from the battle master uh and you get one superior to die and you can use that in addition to everything else um, thrown weapons fighting uh, basically you just get some additional damage to your rolls uh, when you're doing thrown weapon so basically it's ranged but instead of for like bow and arrow it's for throwing spears um, and then unarmed fighting which uh, i won't go into super detail about but boy it really makes the fighters almost as good as monks when it comes to just punching things and it's pretty awesome um fourth level gets you martial versatility which means you can replace your fighting style um so whenever you want to switch up to something else as your character develops or replace a maneuver as well you can do both of those things at every asi increase so four and on because fighters get so many um there are new maneuver options there are seven i believe one two three four five six seven i'm not going to go over all of them but their names are ambush bait and switch brace commanding presence grappling strike quick toss and tac tactical assessment uh they're pretty fun um but you should really check them out uh and build some really crazy battle master stuff because it's it's looking good guys uh but we have the new scion not new we have the cy warrior class and then the rune knight to talk about and i'll let manny start us off with cy warrior so uh, i'm expecting a letter to come to uh, wizards of coast with uh, Disney saying to them, uh, please stop biting our characters. Um, <laughs> so so the, the side warrior is pretty much a Jedi, uh, plain and simple um, at their level. So uh, like like monks have key, um, uh, uh, side warriors have uh, sonic energy. And um, so the abilities that they have is, is limited to the amount of times that they use it for, um, that they have the sonic energy. Um, uh, so they get like protect the field, uh, which helps reduce their damage. Sonic strike, you could have control the weapon. They control the weapon and control it. And uh, and uh, instead of using strength and dexterity modifiers, they use the intelligence modifier instead. Telekinetic, telekinetic movement, you could take this move objects with their mind, uh, which is you know very familiar. And then at seventh level, they get uh, psi powered leaps. Um, jumps which you've seen in star wars movies um telekinetic thrust it, 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 sonic strike like you've seen in uh, yeah anyway you, you get i will point. say yeah i will say by seventh level like i'm super excited about being a jedi uh, like it like at that point like uh you gain a flying speed equal to twice your walking speed so you were just you are zooming um and then telekinetic thrust it really just the idea of force pushing somebody it's just it's so exciting um i i thought they were great um yeah uh, it's it's okay it's just it's just so so much alike star wars it's just <laughs> i'm like i'm like really you know but but it's i mean if someone wanted to play this i wouldn't i wouldn't tell them not to play it's it is it is a, it is fun to play jedi's are fun to play yeah. um so yeah it, it's fun give them a sun sword and they're all set um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you also have um, Bulwark of Force at 15th level, uh, which just lets you shield yourself and other people around you as a bonus action. Uh, I need to double check what it does. Uh, half cover. Uh, for one minute, everybody gets half cover or until you're inca incapacitated, which, you know, hopefully doesn't happen. 
Uh, but you can do this once per long rest unless you use a side die. Um, otherwise, I mean, half cover to everybody around you, pretty good, especially if you like have that and you have uh, you also have a Twilight Domain Cleric around, which also gets half cover in their crazy thing. So then you just get double half cover, which is just craziness. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's also Telekinesis Master, which is using is just pretty much the, tel the Telekinesis spell uh, without using components and, and using uh, your intelligence as your spell casting ability. Um, and you're going to use it like once and then you need a long rest afterwards. Um, it it that's fine. I mean, again, it's it's uh, if you love Star Wars, this is your yeah. chance to play this in D and D. And tenth level doesn't give you much, but it gives you resistance to psychic damage, which isn't super common. But if you're playing a psionic warrior, it might be in that specific situation. Uh, and then also, if you're charmed or frightened, you can expend an energy uh, psi energy die to come out of it, which uh, great, and it all makes sense to be honest. Um, I, it's very well put together. Like we keep joking about, it's very reminiscent of uh, uh, science fiction uh, knights of you know the old republic, the new republic, all those republics. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, it, I think it, it for a side build. It like I, I wish there was more, uh, but it, it's still like pretty awesome. I, I would love to play it. Um, Rune Knight, though. Um... Uh, yes. It's a fantastic subclass, in my opinion. Uh, it's, I, I love the storytelling behind it. I love the fact that this is an ability that you learn from giants. Um, at their level, you learn the ability to carve or create runes uh, for yourself. And there's about, let me see, I believe six, one, two, three, four, five, six runes that they have available that you could, that you could use. You start with two, though. You have six from that pool to choose from. Um, my personal favorite, uh, I like the Stone Ruse. I like the idea that um, it actually follows the name, you know, uh, by uh, the end of that other creature's turn, they have to make a saving throw or they become uh, charmed. Um, and uh, the way to describe it in, in the book is uh, it's pretty nice. It's, it has a very good storytelling flavor to it. Um, any runes that you'd like? I mean, I like a lot of in here. All the different runes are great because um, uh, one, I really like the idea that they work off of, uh, for your DC saves, they work off of constitution. So like you can really make yourself like a, a tank and, and build these, uh, which is great. And these runes can get carved into shields, jewelry, armor, uh, or, or other things, uh, and then have their effects done. Um, and a lot of them give you advantage on a couple specific skills here and there and they're very different so like cloud rune you get sleight of hand and deception which uh work well together but they're you know it's a dex and a charisma based one and then for frost rune you have animal handing animal handling and intimidation which are very different and it's just a great unique way to have some versatility um I re realistically, I like all of them. Uh, you do have to wait until seventh level before you get Hill Rune or Storm Rune, but all the other four are good for you at third level to start using, as far as I can tell. Um, but yeah, they're they all pretty awesome. I like Frost Rune because I just like ice stuff. So, like, just the idea that you are getting plus two to ability checks and saving throws. Uh, well, specifically Constitution and Strength, but just plus two is nice to anything um so that's one that i would like uh what did you think of giant's might which is another third level feature i i love that i like the idea that you not only learn runes but you also learn you're also able to tap into their strength you know so you become if you're small you become larger and you're, you're you have advantage on strength checks uh strength saving throws um and uh, you do extra damage when you when you hit uh i, I think it's I think it's great. Um, one one fun thing in there is that uh, you also do additional damage uh, with an unarmed strike uh, as well. So like if you are just bare knuckle brawling somebody, you're doing more damage than you normally would since it's usually just your strength modifier unless you're doing like the unarmed strike build. But if you did an unarmed strike build with this, it could still work and be awesome. But then like you're about to say, level seven, we have runic shield. <laughs> Yeah, which allows your your uh, rune magic to protect your allies. Um, uh, well, any other creature you see within 60 feet of you is hit by an attack roll. You can use your reaction to force the attacker to roll the d20 and use the new roll. 
Um, that that's amazing. Uh, great stature. Uh, the magic of ruin permanently alters you. You gain this feature. Roll three d four. You grow a number of inches in height equal to the roll, which is that's so you can get up to a foot taller naturally, not including anything else. So you could be like a, a gnome that is now a foot taller than all other gnomes. It just it's just you could be a fur bog that's instead of eight feet tall, you're now you're nine feet tall. I I love it. Yeah. Um, at, at 15 level, you become master of runes. You can invoke each of your rune uh, feature twice rather than once, and you gain all expended uses when you finish a short or long rest. Uh, runic Juggernaut at 18 level, um, you can apply your rune power transformation. You, you learn how to amplify your rune power transformation. Uh, so you just deal uh, with giant smite. You could just deal more more damage. Uh, you become even bigger. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, um, I think so, uh, go, so from large to huge. So you're even you take up another instead of 10 foot squares, you're not taking up 15 foot squares, I think, if I'm doing the math correctly. Yeah. So um, and you get a five foot reach. So even if you don't have a weapon with reach or if you do have a weapon with reach, now you have five more feet. So you have a 10 foot long weapon. Now you have 15 feet where you can reach and you're already taking up a bunch of squares. So, like, yeah, you're a force of nature. Yeah, yeah, I. I I I think if I were to play right now, from the all the subclasses available, that's the one I want to play with right now. I think that's a it's a fun subclass. I'm a hundred percent there with you. I I love it. it, it everything about it is fantastic. Um, what we do uh, at the end of the fighter section, we do have a bunch of ba uh, battle master builds. So they included, I think about two two and a half yeah, about two and a half pa about two pages worth of battle master builds. Um, for new players or DMs who are suggesting stuff for players and trying to help people build. I mean, there's obviously the other classes. So if someone wants to be something akin to an archer, uh, you can choose ranger. Or if you want to be something akin to a brawler, you can choose monk. And that's totally fine. But if you either, you know, trying to do a fighter only party or you guys just really want to have some unique versatility, um, these batter master builds give you a lot of great suggestions. They give you uh, fighting style options, uh, maneuvers to either choose with the uh, the new feature or if you choose battle master specifically, and it tells you feat options that are really good. So we will, for instance, uh, we'll say let's say each of us read one, and I'll just pick one at random for fun. So skirmisher. Um, you thrive. You thrive amid the chaos of battle. You use your mobility and versatility in combat to soften your adversaries and disrupt their formations. An enemy's plan rarely survives contact with you. And for skirmisher, they recommend for fighting style, you could do archery or thrown weapon fighting. So some distance attacks where you keep moving. Uh, maneuvers like ambush, bait and switch, uh, distracting strike. And then feats like uh, alert or mobile or skulker. So like really staying at the distance, staying hidden, getting those strikes in, really uh, being an ambusher and kind of sh surprising people in, in a very roguish type of way that's not completely roguish. Any favorites from the build list that you have, Manny? The two I like was Lancer. Um, which is ju just what it sounds. It's it you know um, you pretty much you're, you're heading to battle with your weapon pointed forward, and I, I like the idea that nothing, uh, only the heaviest blows can deter you. I like the idea that that you charge and and you're you're an unstoppable force. Uh, but yeah, the, this is our our changes up for fighter. Uh, the two new subclasses, the builds, the new maneuvers, a lot of new stuff here specifically for that. Um, Manny, if you want to close it out. Sure. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below about this subclass. Did you like it? What would you change? Uh, what are your favorite parts? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Support the channel. You know the drill. And uh, be safe out there.